Happy New Year, and welcome to 2020's first roundup of key changes and new features coming up in Office 365. This month, we have some news about data residency for UK organisations, harnessing AI to deliver better presentations, chatbots, teams, forms, and more. This update is brought to you by the team at CompanyNet. We're an independent business with an expert team that knows Office 365 inside out. If your organisation is looking to get more value out of Office 365, drop us a line. First up this month, Microsoft are giving UK organisations the chance to fast-track moving their data into local data centres. Opting to move your data will help ensure your organisation continues to meet data residency requirements and maintains resilience. Data which will be moved includes Microsoft Teams chats, SharePoint online sites, Exchange mailboxes and files stored in OneDrive for business. Microsoft is offering early data migration to any organization who requests it. You just have to opt in before July the 1st this year. Then they'll move your data into their UK data centers within two years. So these things don't happen quickly, but if you don't opt in, it'll still happen, but it'll just take even longer. Now to news of a tool that can help you improve your presentation skills. There are times when all of us have to give a presentation. Usually that means practicing with your PowerPoint to get the timings right and to make sure that what you're saying makes sense. Unless it's a really important presentation though, most of us don't want to trouble our colleagues by practicing in front of them. Office 365 now has a solution. You can now get feedback directly from PowerPoint by reading your presentation out loud into the microphone. An AI-powered presenter coach will give you live feedback as well as a useful dashboard summarising your speech when you're finished. It highlights things such as pacing issues, whether you've just read the content of the slide out loud, and if you've inadvertently used any terms that might offend people, such as the right man for the job. You can find the presenter coach under the slideshow tab in PowerPoint Online, the web-based version of PowerPoint. Next, chatbots. The latest addition to Microsoft Power Platform, which already includes things like Power BI, Power Apps and Power Automate, is Power Virtual Agents. Virtual agents are basically bots which you can deploy to answer questions and trigger workflows using a conversational or chat interface. Like much of the no-code Power Platform, virtual agents are actually quite easy to create, and you can have a simple bot up and running in minutes. If you want to get really in-depth, there are then options to extend its capabilities further. If you're already licensed to use Power Platform, you should be able to try out the preview of Power Virtual Agents until the end of January. Visit powerva.microsoft.com to get started. While we're talking about Power Platform, a much requested feature has been finally added to Microsoft's cloud-based workflow tool, Power Automate, formerly known as Microsoft Flow. Rather than having to recreate them manually, you can now copy and paste parts of your workflow using an internal clipboard. A new feature is coming to Outlook Online, which will help you get better prepared for meetings. Meeting insights will soon automatically add themselves to the bottom of each relevant calendar meeting. The feature uses AI to automatically discover files and emails which are likely to be relevant to the discussion topic at hand. It puts key information at your fingertips and helps bring you up to speed more quickly about a meeting. This feature is rolling out now and is turned on by default, so you should see it soon if you use the web version of Outlook. Next, here's something that's been in Teams for a while now, but which you might not have spotted. If you select a person, there's now an Organisation tab. This reveals an org chart showing that person's colleagues and their line manager. You can even navigate through the chart, so long as those links have been made in your organization's Active Directory. As you'd expect, each contact card presents the user with a direct chat, email, phone call and video call link. Now, for a while it's been possible to use code to add conditional formatting to SharePoint lists. But who has the time for that? Microsoft are about to add a new edit menu to give you a whole host of formatting options for lists. For example, you'll now be able to specify colours, borders, text formatting and styles, and even icons. Microsoft Forms users can expect a new field soon, which lets users upload a file as part of their form submission. When setting up your form, you'll simply be able to add a new field with File Upload as the type. You'll be able to specify how many files can be attached, as well as size limits and allowed file types. 
This new feature opens various interesting new possibilities for your forums. This is being rolled out exceptionally slowly, with some people receiving the update last year and others still not getting it, but it's expected to reach everyone very soon. Finally, a word about Office 365's Service Health Dashboard. This is an essential tool for checking whether there are any incidents or advisories happening across Office 365 that might affect performance. Although the dashboard itself is very user-friendly, it comes with several limitations. Only people with admin roles can access it, and it requires admins to check the dashboard regularly rather than providing an alert function. The impact is that it's difficult to proactively spot issues and notify users of them unless admins continuously check the dashboard. This is being addressed with the introduction of email notifications. This long-awaited feature lets you configure email addresses to receive alerts, so admins can receive notifications on the channel that's most convenient for them. Notifications can also be configured to include incidents and advisory notices, as well as restricting the services which are included. The limitation of only two email addresses seems quite restrictive, however by using Office 365 groups and some creative configuration you can easily share notifications with the wider organisation. For example, you could use an Office 365 group unified mailbox address, you could use a Microsoft Teams channel address, or you could have it sent to a Yammer group. That's it for this month, we'll be back with more updates in February. In the meantime, why not subscribe to our regular monthly update emails by visiting the address on the screen now.